Hey everyone, we will review for lab exams one, our lab experiments one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We will also perform the exercise. Instructions for best results of this exercise. First, please repeat your lab experiments number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, as many as possible before taking this exercise. Don't worry about your score. If you repeat the lab experiments, only the highest score will be recorded to your grade book. Second, prepare some pieces of paper or pen and pencil to write your answer. There will be two or three seconds after each question to write your answer before the answer key is given and explained. And make sure you know that you can pause the video if you need more time. After finish the exercise, check your answers, how many are correct and how many are incorrect. Repeat the process until you get 100% correct answer. Make sure that the 100% correct answers are based on your knowledge, not from your guessing. It is very likely that you will get a very good score on your lab exam number one if you follow this instruction correctly. Okay, we start with number one. The purpose of lab safety rules and protocols is to choose your answer A, B, C, or D. Okay, so make sure you note that the purpose of Lab safety rules and protocols is to protect everyone in the lab from injury and infection. That's the main objective of the rule. Number two, which of the following food is allowed in the laboratory? Fruit, breakfast, food in a container, or never? Correct answer is never. So never bring food and drinks into the lab. Number three, which of the following beverages is allowed in the lab? Coke, Mountain Dew, drink in a sealed container or never? Yes, the correct answer should be never bring any food or beverages in the lab. It is for your own protection. Number four, lab coats, gloves, face masks, and goggles are example of A, B, C, or D. Okay, yeah, the correct answer should be, this is a type of equipment that's used for personal protection. So therefore it is called the personal protective equipment or PPE. Next, to protect your skin and clothing from hazards such as chemicals and infectious agents, the blank should be worn all the time in the lab. Which one? Hooded sweatshirt, apron, lab coat, or raincoat? Yes, it should be lab coat. It has to be worn all the time in the lab. Which of the following personal items provide the same protection as goggles? Eyeglasses, soft lenses, sunglasses, or none of the above? 
Of course, the answer is none of the above. Your eyeglasses, sunglasses cannot protect your eyes. Okay, the same as the uh, goggle. So usually the lab will provide you with goggle during dissection. When you are required to wear clothes to shoes in the lab, when working with the corrosive chemicals, working with microorganisms, working with the sharp object, or always? The answer is always use the clothes to shoes in the lab. Never use sandal in the lab. When you are required to tie your long hair, A, B, C, or D? The answer should be when working with the uh, Bunsen burner. Okay, so this burner can uh, flames the hair. So make sure you tie your long hair, if you have long hair in the lab when using this flame. Soap should be applied to blank hands. A, B, C, or D. It has to be applied to wet hand. So wet your hand first before putting the soap. How long should hands be leather while washing? 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. The answer is at least 20 seconds when you wash your hand and also when you put disinfectants on table, you have to wait 20 seconds before dry it with the paper towel. Disinfectant is used on work surface A, B, C, or D. Yes, disinfectant should be used before beginning of your lab work and also after you complete your lab work and if there is a spill on the bands. Okay, so therefore, the answer should be all the above. Choices are correct. Glasses, uh, glass slides, scalpels, razor blades, cover glasses, and capillary tubes are classified as blank. Hazardous, infectious, sharp, or biohazard. Yes, they are sharp object. So they are classified as a sharp object. Glass lights, pipettes, and capillary tubes should be disposed in blank, regular trash, recyclable trash, sharp container, or biohazard bag. Because they are sharp object, then they have to be disposed in sharp container. Every lab will have sharp container for sharp object. Paper towel, lab notes, and lens paper should be disposed in regular trash, recyclable trash, shop container, or biohazard bag. Okay, so paper towel, lab note, and lens paper, they are just regular trash. Therefore, you can dispose them to the regular trash container. Dissection specimens and bacterial culture plates should be disposed in A, B, C, or D. Okay, so these specimens, culture plates, they are considered as a biohazard. Therefore, they have to be disposed in biohazard bag. When you are finished with the dissection tray, scalpels, and forceps used in dissection, you should blank A, B, C, or D. 
put them in a shared container, put them in biohazard bag, put them in regular trash container, or wash them in the sink. Okay, just remember this dissection tray, scalpel, and forcep are reusable equipment. So we need them. So you have to wash them in the sink for next use. So wash them in the sink. Which of the following should be done first in the event of a lab accident? Call 911, be panic, notify campus security, or notify the instructor. Yeah, the answer should be notify your instructor first, and he will do the next process. Okay, number 18, look at this picture, A, B, C. Which of the following picture is showing the correct way to carry a microscope? A, B, C, or, or A, B, or C, only three pictures. Okay, the correct way should be C. Okay, so make sure you put one of your hand under the base of or the body of the microscope, and the other hand holding the arms of the microscope. So this is the correct way to carry microscope. So the answer will be C. When storing the microscope, which objective lenses should be placed over the stage? The scan lens, low power lens, high power lens, or oil immersion lens. Just your lens. Okay. When you store the microscope, then the lowest lens, which is the scanning lens, should be placed over the stage. Okay, so should be this lens over here. Should be over the stage. Okay, this is to protect the lens from uh, distraction. Okay, from scratching. Okay, so the answer should be A, which is the scanning lens. When storing a microscope, the state should be in the blank positions. A, B, C, or D. So the so state is over here, okay? And this state should be in uh, lower position. It should be fully, uh, fully down. So you have to put down this slide, okay? So fully down. The arrow point to the, okay, so look at the picture. So what this arrow point to? This one is the arm of the microscope. Okay, so this is pointing to the arm of the microscope. The next one, the arrow point to the, look at this picture. So this is ocular lens. Okay, so there are two ocular lenses over here. So this arrow pointing into the ocular lenses. Okay, now look at this picture. The arrow point to the, already mentioned before, when storing the microscope, this part has to be fully down, which is the stage. So this arrow point to the stage. Okay, next one. The arrow point to the, look at this picture. This is pointing to something under the microscope that actually 
used for open and close the light intensity that go to the object. So this part is called the iris. Okay, so iris diaphragm, which is D. Okay, look at this picture, the arrow point to the which part of the microscope. Okay, remember the top one is the ocular lens and you have four lenses over here. It's called the objective lens. And this objective lens is actually held by this part that is pointed by the arrow. And this part can rotate, can be revolved. So therefore the name is revolving nose piece. Okay, number 26. The arrow point to the which part? Look at this picture. And we already mentioned that there are four of this object. It's called the objective lenses. Okay, and the length of the, uh, the lens will tell you which one has higher power or higher magnification. The longer the lens, the higher the magnification. So this arrow pointing to the objective lenses. Okay, look at the next picture, the arrow point to the, okay, so this arrow over here. So there are two knobs over here. This is bigger one. Okay, the bigger one is called the course adjustment knob. And it is used for lift the stitch up and down, okay? Put it down or up very fast, okay? The next one, the smaller one, is called the course adjustment knob. It is also to raise the stitch up and down, but with a very smooth movement, okay? So this arrow point to the course adjustment now. Okay, next arrow, point to the, we already mentioned that, this is the fine adjustment now. This is to fine tune, to fine adjusting the stage up and down. Fine adjustment. The arrow point to the, okay. okay, look at this. There should be two knob also, the lower one and the upper one. And this two knob is used for moving the stage, okay, whether front, back, or right and left. The top one is used for moving the stage front and back. Okay, so this one is called the upper, okay? Mechanical stage upper knob. Okay, the next one is pointing to the lower knob, okay? Which is the knob that used for moving the stage left or right. Okay, so that's the mechanical stage lower knob. Which part of the microscope will be used first to adjust the focus when starting with the lowest power? Okay, this lowest power will be the scanning lens. So always start looking through the microscope using the scanning lens. So when we start and finish, put the scanning lens above the stage. So which one has to be adjust first when try to focus? Of course, we use this, okay? The, the course adjustment knob 
first. So this is the one that will be uh, used for lowering or increasing the stage up and down. So course adjustment now or course focus. And in your lab experiment, the virtual lab experiment, you did this several times. Okay, so you put the course adjustment knob to see the object for the first time to make sure it is in focus. Okay, which objective lens will be used first to adjust the focus with the course adjustment focus? So which objective lens will be used first? Okay, A, B, C, or D. And again, just remember, whenever you start the experiments or using the microscope, always start with the scanning lens, the lowest power of objective lens. Okay, so start with scanning lens. Which of the following component of microscopy is related to apparent size of the object? Mechanical stage, condenser, diaphragm, iris diaphragm, or the magnification? Okay, this is your answer. So because we're talking about size, okay, it's mean the magnification. So magnification is the part of the microscope used for increase the size and this is done by using this four objective lens so four objective lens are the lens that use for magnification so the answer is the magnification the lens of the microscope that is responsible for magnification of the specimen is the ocular lenses, objective lenses, condenser, or iris. I did mention before, the one that's responsible for making object bigger is the objective lenses, because there are four objective lenses over here. You can start from the lower magnification, you can increase it to the next one, to the next one, until the last one, the longest one over here. So this is used for increase magnification, the objective lenses. Which of the following lens of the microscope can further magnify the image produced by the objective lens? Ocular lens, objective lens, condenser, or iris? Just your answer. So when you put specimen or slide on the stage okay so the light will be coming from the bottom so it will be magnified by this objective lens okay after that the objects will be seen through this second lens over here it's called the ocular lens so the first magnification will be given by the objective lens and the second magnification will be given by the ocular lens. And when we combine both of them, it's become what we call the total magnification. So total magnification is a product of multiplications of objective lens, okay, time, the ocular lens power okay so the first magnification given by the objective lens and the second will be given by the ocular lens so the answer will be ocular lens which of the following quality factors is usually expressed in a number such as four times 10 times, 40 times, and 100 times. The mechanical stage, condenser, iris, diaphragm, or magnification. Okay, the expressions of 
magnification is the one that uses using this time, whether four time, 10 time, 40 time, 100 time, 400 time, or 1000 time. So this is the expression for magnification, the size, the magnification of the object. Adding stain of color on the specimen is used for enhancing blank resolution, magnification, contrast, or power. Okay, so when we work with cell, they usually very clear. So we need to put color stain on the cell. It is used for enhancing the contrast. So you will be seeing the contrast between the cell and the environment. So color used for contrast. Which of the following is defined as the ability to distinguish fine detail? Resolution, magnification, contrast, or power? This is your answer. Okay. It is not magnification because magnification related to size, not detail. Power is also the same as magnification. This is for size. Contrast is just to make sure you know, the, the object can be seen, can be distinguished between object and the environment. The one that used for C detail is called resolution. Okay, so resolution is the answer. Which of the following is defined as the ability to enlarge object? A, B, C, or D. Of course, enlarge means size. Okay, make it bigger. So make it bigger is biomagnification or magnification. Okay, so the answer should be magnification to enlarge object. The total magnification will be the last magnification after multiplying the magnification of uh, objective lens and the ocular lens. Which of the following is produced by multiplication of ocular lens and the objective lens use? Okay, we already mentioned that. The answer will be the TM, total magnification. Increasing the blank would allow us to tell if that it would appear as one object or two objects very near one another. So this is to uh, know whether the one that we see is really one object or two objects. Which one is that? Resolution, magnification, contrast, or total magnification. So this actually telling us about detail. So we can see detail if we can distinguish between cell with another cell and usually next to it. Sometimes it's, it's difficult if the microscope is not in a good resolution. You're gonna see blurry two object, look like one object or three object. So the answer should be the detail with the resolution. If you cannot see the object with your eyes, you can increase the length to make it bigger. Resolution, magnification, contrast, or light intensity. Okay, the answer, remember this is bigger, this is mean size, and the one that's related to size is magnification. So the answer will be magnification. The lenses of bright field microscope are responsible for blank of the objects you are viewing. Resolution, magnification, contrast, or light intensity. Lenses, okay. So lenses consist of objective lens and ocular lens. 
what they use for to make object larger or bigger. So this is also magnification. The blank causes the stage to move back and forth. The mechanical stage upper knob, lower knob, fine adjustment knob, or course adjustment knob. Okay, choose your answer. Okay, remember course and fine adjustment knob is to move stage up and down. Okay, so this is not the answer. The question asking you moving the stage back and forth. Okay, there are two over here upper mechanical upper knob and mechanical stage lower knob. The one that move back and forth is the upper one. So upper back and forth. Okay. Okay, the blank causes the stage to move left and right. The mechanical state upper knob, lower knob, fine adjustment knob, or course adjustment knob. Okay, so the answer will be we already mentioned about that the lower mechanical state lower knob will be the one that move the stage left or right. Okay, so the mechanical state lower knob. The blank causes the stage to move upward and downward, up and down. Yes, we already mentioned that. The, the adjustment knob over here, the course adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob is used for moving the stage up and down. So the only choice over here is the course adjustment knob. The course and fine adjustment knob are as used to adjust ocular lens, stage and the objective lens, stage and diaphragm, or the ocular lens and objective lens. So what is the answer? Okay, again, the course and fine adjustment knob is to move stage up and down. So when it is moving up and down, it's actually adjust the distance between the stage and the objective lenses here. Okay, so it's controlling or adjusting the distance between the stage and the objective lenses. The course adjustment knob is only used when using scanning lens and low power lens, high power lens, oil immersion lens, or all type of objective lenses. Okay, so remember the course adjustment knob over here is the one that used to move the stage up and down with a very fast movement. Now it is not fine adjustment, so it's very uh, fast movement. Therefore, this one is only used for lower, right? lower power of objective lenses, which is scanning lens and low power lens. We cannot use them with high power and oil immersion because it might streak the lens with the slide. It might break the lens. Okay, so use this course adjustment now only for scanning lens or low power lens. The objective lenses of the compound light microscope are attached to the eyepieces, rotating nose pieces, body, uh, body tube, or the stage. Okay, again, look at this picture. These four objective lens. All of them attached to the part that can be revolved, that can be rotated. And this is called the revolving nose piece or rotating nose piece.
the power or magnification of the scanning lens is four time, ten time, forty time, or one hundred time. Okay, remember the scanning lens is the lowest one, the shortest one. It is only magnify object four time. Okay, so scanning lens has four time. The power is four times only. Now, how about the high power? Remember the sequence, scanning, low power, high power, and oil immersion. That's the sequence of the objective lens from the lowest power to the highest power. Scanning four times, low power 10 times, high power 40 times, the oil immersion lens is 100 times. Okay, so to answer this question, the high power has 40 times. Okay, now how about the power of oil immersion? This is the highest one, which is 100. The total magnification achieved when using the low power objective lens, remember low power objective lens with 10 time ocular lens. What is the total magnification will be? Remember total magnification is multiplication of the power of objective lens and the power of ocular lens. We already got the power of ocular lens, which is 10 times. Now, how about the objective lens? It say low power. Low power is 10 times, right? So 10 times 10 is going to be 100 times. So the total magnification, if we use the low power lens with ocular lens, will be 100. So the object will be magnified 100 times bigger than the original size. The total magnification achieved when using the high power objective lens with the 10 time ocular lens will be, of course, you just time 10 time with the high power. High power is 40. Okay, it's going to be 400 times. Now, how about the total magnification when using the oil immersions with? 10 time ocular lens. And just time the 10 ocular lens with 100 power of oil immersion. So it's going to be the TM will be 1000 times. That's actually the highest magnification for this microscope because the highest power for the objective lens is the oil immersion, which is 100 times, okay? So the highest magnification will be 1,000 times for this type of microscope. Which objective lens require drop of oils on the slide to be viewed clearly? The scanning lens, the low power, high power, or oil immersion? Okay, so the name is actually telling you why it is called the oil emission objective lens. Because if you use this objective lens, the oil emission objective lens, then you need to put oils on it, okay, the emission oil, in order to uh, increase the resolution. Okay, so the oil emission lens need oil. Which objective lens could get dirty if you move the revolving nose piece after using the oil immersion lens? The scanning lens, the low power lens, the high power lens, or the oil immersion lens? Okay, so when you use the oil immersion lens, then you have to put oil over here. And when you use this oil immersion lens, this lens will touch the oil because this oil immersion lens is 
the longest one is touching the oil okay so if you move this oil immersion lens and change with another objective lens then the second longest one will be the one that will touch the oil and will get dirty if you put it wrongly okay if you move this revolving nose piece in the wrong direction this high power lens can get dirty okay so the one that can get dirty is the uh, high power the low power and the scanning lens will not get dirty because they are uh, farther uh, from the stage which objective lens provides the least total magnification scanning low power high power oil immersion and remember, total magnification is uh, multiplying the objective lens with the ocular lens. If we have 10 times ocular lens, okay, scanning lens is 4, so 10 times 4 is 40 times. This one 10 times 10, 100 times. This one is 10 times 40, 400 times. This is 10 for 100 then 1000 time okay so the least total magnification will be coming from using the scanning lens which objective lens provide the greatest total magnification of course will be from the oil immersion lens will be 1000 time because this is 10 times 100 during which phase do the uh, during the which phase do the chromosomes start to condense so this is actually talking about mitosis okay so during which phase of mitosis the chromosomes start to condense interphase prophase metaphase anaphase telophase or cytokinesis Future Okay, so mitosis actually only have four stages or four phases, starting from P, okay, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So during which ones the chromosomes start to condense, which means start to become really, really thick. If you see this picture, then it's starting from this, okay, during the prophase. Before that, it's called the interface. The chromosome is very thin. It's not thick yet. Okay, so prophase should be the answer. During which phase of mitosis does the nuclear envelope begins to break down and spindle fiber begins to form? Okay, so choose your answer. Okay, if you see, you compare the interface and prophase, you see the interface still have nuclear envelope. Okay, and that nuclear envelope is broken down. You don't see it in the prophase because it's already broken down. And you also see this fiber over here start to form. Okay, that should be the answer. Okay, the nuclear envelope begin to break down and spindle fiber begin to form during Prophase. During which phase do the chromosome line up in the middle of the cell? Choose your answer. Okay, so after prophase, the chromosome will move to the middle of the cell. Over here, really nicely line up in the middle of the cell. And this stage is called the metaphase. During which phase do the sister chromatids separate and go toward opposite pole? Choose your answer. Okay, so look at the prophase. Okay, this chromosome starting to divide, but still attached in the centromere. So the chromatid is not separated yet. If you see in the interface, 
the chromatids also still attach. So this chromosome still not dividing yet. But if you see in the anaphase, the chromosome already divided. So the sister chromatids already separated and now it's become its own chromosome. So this is the time when the sister chromatids are separated, which is the anaphase. During which phase does the nuclear envelope begins to reform? Is your answer. Okay, remember when the, during the interface you see the nuclear envelope, it is broken down during prophase and you don't see the nuclear envelope anymore during metaphase and anaphase. But after that, the nuclear envelope will be reformed. So you're going to have nucleus again on the next stage. On that next stage is called the Telophase. During which phase does the cleavage furrow begin to pinch the cell? Okay. okay, so cleavage furrow is the structure right, that start to pinch the cell and will separate the cell into two daughter cell. So the final result over here will be two daughter cell. Okay, so these cleavage furrows are present or is present in telophase. What is the correct sequence of phases of the mitosis? Okay, remember, start from prophase. So start from prophase and end with telophase. Okay, so end with telophase. And between them, there is metaphase and anaphase. So this is the easy way to uh, memorize using P okay, on math. So P math. Okay, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So look at that sequence. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So B will be the answer. What is the final product of the mitosis? One daughter cell identical to the parent cell, two daughter cells identical to the parent cell, three daughter cells identical to the parent cell or four daughter cells identical to parent cell. Okay, if you see and remember the sequence, okay, the final result will be two daughter cells that carry the same chromosomes like the parent cell. So it will be identical to the parent cell. So two daughter cells with identical chromosome with the parent cell. If the parent cell has 46, so this is human chromosome actually. If the parent cell has 46 chromosome, how many chromosome will be its daughter cell have after mitosis and cytokinesis afterwards? Okay, 23, 46, 92, or 138. And remember, mitosis starts with the parent cell, let's say this parent cell has 46, okay, after the process, P, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then it results into two daughter cells, and each daughter cell will be identical with the parent, carry the same number of chromosomes like the parent. So each of them will carry also 46, okay, identical with the parents, 46. Okay, now meiosis, okay, we're done with the mitosis, now we are in meiosis. Meiosis is reproductive cell division, okay. This is the one that produces the eggs 
and sperms for human. So these mysis will produce eggs and or sperms. Okay, now mysis has double stages. Okay, mitosis have four stages. This mysis has eight stages. Okay, doubles of the mitosis. Okay, during which stage of mysis does crossing over occur? Okay, on your lab experiment, it's showing you when the crossing over occur. It is happening here on the very first stage. It's called the prophase one of meiosis one. This is when the chromosomes, okay, the one that close one another, will making what we call the crossing over. So the gene will be given eh, or substitute from one chromosome, uh, one chromosome to another chromosome. So there will be crossing over of the gene in these two chromosomes. So during the prophase one of meiosis one. During which stage of meiosis do the sister chromosomes separate? Choose your answer from these eight stages. Okay, prophase one, meiosis one, anaphase one of meiosis one until telophase two okay, of meiosis two. So this should be prophase two of meiosis two, anaphase two of meiosis two, Metaphase two of mysis two and telophase two of mysis two. So when the sister chromosome, not sister chromatic, remember the question asking you the sister chromosome separate. Okay, so this still chromosome, chromosome, okay, this is chromosome, chromosome. So these two chromosomes separate. This one is become chromatid, chromatid, and then separate. Each of these products is now become chromosomes. Okay, so that's happening during the anaphase one of meiosis one. So this is separation of chromosome. If we talk about this anaphase two of meiosis two, this is separation of chromatids. Okay. During which stage of meiosis, sister chromatid separated. Okay, again, I have to put two over here, two, two, and two. And we already mentioned that sister chromatid separated during anaphase, anaphase one or two. The answer will be during the anaphase two, because anaphase one is separation of chromosome. The anaphase two is separation of chromatids. Now, in the anaphase two, the number of chromosome will be double. That will be double. In the anaphase one, the number of chromosome is still the same like the parent cell. What is the final product of the meiosis? One daughter cell identical to the parents. Two daughter cell identical to the parents, three daughter cell identical to the parents, or four daughter cell each carry half of chromosome of their parent cell. Okay, so meiosis will always produce four because a double cell division. Okay, remember mitosis produce two. In the meiosis, these two continue to divide. So each of them will divide into two, causing the final product become four. Okay, four daughter cell, or if it is sperm, will be four sperm. And each sperm will carry only half of the chromosome of the parent. Let's say the parent cell, let's say this is human cell, have 46 chromosomes. Okay. And then after meiosis one, then you have 
two daughter cell with 46 chromosome and 46 chromosome. And these two cells continue to divide to produce each of them two daughter cell that only carry half of the chromosome. So each sperm will only carry 23, 23, 23, and 23 uh, chromosomes. Okay, so the final result of the meiosis will be four daughter cell that carry half of the parent's chromosome. If the parent cell has 46 chromosomes, how many chromosomes will each daughter cell have after meiosis and cytokinesis occurs? Okay, we just explains that, that the daughter cell will be four of them and each of them only carry half of the parent chromosome. So half of 46 is 20. The study of tissue is called cytology, ecology, cardiology, or histology. What is that? Okay, cytology, cyto means cell. So this is study of cell. So this is not the answer. Ecology, eco means habitats. Okay, so this is study of environment. Study of environment. Cardio mean the heart. Cardiology is study of the heart. Okay. Histo mean tissue. Logy mean study of. So this is the answer. Study of tissue. Histology. Tissue consists of many organs, organ system, organelles, or cells. Okay, for this, you have to remember the biological organization. Okay, start from uh, atoms. Okay, atoms combine to make molecule. Okay, so molecule consists of atoms, and the molecules will combine to make cell. Okay, so cell consists of molecules, and cell will combine to make tissue. Okay. And tissue combined to make organs. Organs will make organ system. And organ system will make organism. Okay. So if you remember this, then you know that tissue consists of many cells. So cell will make tissue. So tissue consists of many cells. Which of the following is the columnar epithelial tissue? Look at the picture, okay? A, B, or C. What is columnar mean? Columnar mean tall, look like a column, okay? Tall cell. So which one has the tall cell? Of course, is the C over here. So C is the columnar. How about A and B? A, it is flat, okay? So flat means squamous. So squamous cell means flat cell. B is look like a cube, okay? So this is cu uh, cuboidal, look like a cube cell. And C is the columnar. Okay, so the answer is C for this picture. Now, how about this one, which of the following is the squamous epithelial tissue? Where it is uh, explains, the one that is flat is squamous, squamous flat. So it will be A. Now, which one is cube-like or cuboidal? Cuboidal will be B. Which of which type of connective tissue function as a heat insulator under the skin? So which type of connective tissue? We have several types of connective tissue okay, in your lab experiments. 
blood, fat, areole, dense, regular bones, all of them type of connective tissue. So which one actually located under the skin and has a function for insulating our body? Blood, adipose, areolar, or dense regular connective tissue? The answer is adipose tissue or fat tissue. Okay, so fat tissue can also use as insulator under the skin. Which type of connective tissue contain large number of water for transportation, okay, for circulation? Which one is that? Okay, of course, is the blood. Blood is connective tissue that has a function to circulate oxygen and nutrients. So blood is the end. Which type of muscle tissue lack stripes or striations? Smooth, cardiac, or skeletal muscle? Of course, the name is telling you smooth means no stripe. Okay, so the structure is really, really smooth without any uh, striations. So the answer will be smooth uh, muscle tissue. Which type of muscle tissue has striations or stripes and branches? Smooth, cardiac, or skeletal muscle? Okay, so you have to remember the morphology of the muscle tissue. And during lab experiment, you also see that different. Smooth muscle is look like a spindle muscle. Okay, only have one nucleus per cell no striation the cardiac muscle is a cylindrical with branching so the the cell is actually a branching cell with stripes so you should see stripes in this cardiac muscle and only have one nucleus per cell the last one skeletal muscle is the longest cylindrical type of muscle tissue. Okay, it has stripe. And because this is the longest one, it's carry many nuclei. Okay, a lot of nuclei in one cell. Okay, the question is, which muscle tissue has striations with branching cell? So the answer will be the cardiac. Okay, now how about the last, uh, the next one over here? Which type of muscle tissue has striations and many nuclei per cell? We just explained that. This will be the skeletal muscle. Which of the following cell has function to carry impulses or action potential? Red blood cell, white blood cell, neurons, or neuroglia? Okay, so remember red blood cell function to carry oxygen, okay, carry oxygen and nutrients. So this is not carrying the impulses. What blood cell is for protections against disease, okay? Neuron is used for carry impulses or action potential. So this would be the answer. How about neuroglia? Neuroglia is the cell that actually support the neuron. It is not carry the impulses. Their job is to support the neuron. So the answer will be the neuron. Okay, which of the following tissue coordinates, regulates, and integrates body functions or homeostasis? Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, skeletal tissue, or nervous tissue? So remember, we have four types of tissue in our body. Which one control and regulate our homeostasis? Yes, it's gonna be the one that control, carry the impulse, detects the stimulus, produce responses, 
control our action, which is the nervous tissue. I think that's all for this exercise and review. Good 